I'm Katria Takata Glushkoff, and today I'm going to be talking about rock deformation within the field of geology. First, let's think big picture. Why do we even care about rocks? No matter where you're standing right this moment, there's four and a half billion years of Earth's history below you. Rocks can tell us how the environment has changed, how continents have moved and formed, how the climate has changed, and it can even tell us about what ecosystems or animals have been present in the past. Right now, all the continents are shifting as we speak. In fact, plates are moving at the rate of our fingernails growing. Today, we'll focus on rock deformation. What is it? How do we identify it? And what can we learn from it? So what is deformation? It's the bending, breaking, shattering, stretching, or straining of a rock. Deformation can occur either brittly or ductily. Brittle deformation occurs when the chemical bonds between atoms in a rock break. Ductile deformation occurs when chemical bonds break, but some of them form new ones. So a rock tends to deform more ductily if it has higher pressure, higher temperature, or a slower deformation rate. It also can depend on the rock's composition. So how can we identify ductile or brittle deformation in the field? We'll see brittle deformation as breaks, like these joints, or we'll see ductile deformation, like these folds. Deformation can show the impacts of three different possible types of stresses. Compression, extension, or shearing. Those three different types of stresses can be results of greater plate tectonic movement. So let's take a look outside and see what we can learn from the geology here. How can we identify deformation? Hmm. Now, if you'll notice, these rocks all seem to be lining up parallel to each other. Now, what can we infer from that? Based on the orientation of these lines, we can infer that there were stresses coming this way, perpendicular to those lines. Now let's look more closely at these rocks. So along here, we see that it's a little bit pinched in here, and pinched in here, and pinched in here. And that's indicative of these compressional stresses, as well as these elongating extensional stresses. So, today we talked about how rocks deform in response to regional and tectonic stresses. We talked about how we can identify deformation in the form of breaks in rocks or folds. And we talked about what we can learn from deformation in terms of placing a region into the context of its greater plate tectonic history.